So I'll club all of those three points together and give you a statistic which will convince you as to why corporations play such an important role. And that is because of the 100 largest economies in the world today, 49 are countries and 51 are companies. I'll repeat that. Of the 100 largest economies in the world today, only 49 are countries, 51 are companies. So that's the power that corporations have. But along with that, there is a liability which is lingering along, which is the fact that in America alone, the top 1% of the population, which is individuals and institutions, account for 90% of the wealth of that country. Just 1% account for 90% of the wealth in that country. India is a tad better, though we are heading towards a plutocracy. The top 1% of Indian population, individuals and institutions, account for 55% of the country's wealth. And the bottom 60% account for 4.5% of the country's wealth. So while corporations are extremely powerful, the kind of disparities that are just staring in their face are immense. We are all taking great pride in the fact that India is the third largest economy in the world in terms of purchasing power parity, right? India is the sixth largest economy in terms of its nominal GDP. But very few of us look at the other fact file, which is that India is 142nd in the world in terms of nominal GDP per capita. Which means that while we are sixth largest in terms of the nominal GDP, when it comes to nominal GDP per capita, we go down all the way to 142nd. So there is a long way that we have to go. And for that, corporations have a very important role to play. Because corporations need to be integrating social and economic interests in their long-term vision and strategy. Even today, after 72 years of independence, 16 crore Indians do not have access to drinking water. That is 50% of America's population. No doubt, Modi government 2.0 has mandated or prioritized providing pipe drinking water to all of India in the next five years. There are so many such figures that are glaring us in the face. For example, five years ago, our sanitation levels or the people deprived of adequate sanitation was larger than the population of certain continents. We've covered a huge uh, number in the last five years. So why I'm highlighting this fact is that the role of corporations needs to go beyond the quarter and quarter growth which nags at every CIO, CFO, CEO, CEO in every company, but needs to look at more holistic missions. Because capitalism needs to be more purposeful than being just a zero-sum game. Uh, the anchor introduced my interactions with several thought leaders across the globe, and I'd like to quote one, which is Professor Edward Freeman, who is considered the father of stakeholder theory. And in my interaction with him, he said, that capitalism is one of the most powerful systems introduced in contemporary times because it helps all of us achieve what no single individual or institution can achieve. However, to say that the objective of corporations is to make money is like saying the objective of the human body is to make red blood cells. We do not exist to make red blood cells. Red blood cells facilitate our existence. We do not live to breathe. Breathing helps us to live. Extrapolate that to a corporation. Corporations do not exist to make profits. Profits are a prerequisite for the corporations to exist. Then why do corporations exist is a question which CXOs in the boardrooms need to increasingly confabulate on. Because that's a question which has been 
hitting on either side of the spectrum as a football in the World Cup match. And it's interesting that recently, just this week, a business roundtable in the US with 300 corporate leaders have passed a resolution and uh, the JP Morgan CEO, Jamie Dimon, is a chairperson. Almost 30 years, businesses have ventured, the top 300 businesses in America have ventured to redefine their corporate existence as going beyond creating wealth for their shareholders. The whole objective, they now say, is to focus or balance on the interests of diverse stakeholders at par with that of the shareholders. And by stakeholders, I mean all those who directly and indirectly contribute to the corporate success, whether it's customers, the employees, the supply chain, the society, the national environment, or the government. Because each of them play a very vital role in the success of any corporation. In my previous book, Win-Win Corporations, so the Data Group book is my third book, Win-Win Corporations focused on how corporations can actually do that. And I'm happy, I'm quite uh, elated that the research that I have done and already published and several of my ilk who focused on the way to business through this kind of a win-win strategy is that large corporations are now focusing increasingly on this aspect of their vision and mandate. And I often say corporations need to have environmentally aware, socially inclusive, and financially rewarding missions. I think these three areas form the three pillars or the tripod on which the future of a corporation would succeed.